I just decided that I wanted to ask you some questions, and you and we can just go from there. Does that sound good to sure. you? Sure. Sounds okay. good. Well, the first thing that, that was coming to my mind is, what made you start Missionaries of Our Mother of the Eucharist? Well, and that's like a really big, big question, <laughs> and I can try to do it in a nutshell. Well, I think the bottom line is my conversion came through our mother. Mm. And I knew after I had my conversion, you know, going to Hollywood in hopes of being a movie director, but through Mary in Medjugorje, it's like she said, Lilla, hey, this is a purpose in life pointing to her son, pointing to Jesus. And she was saying, open your heart to God. He is alive. You know, and at this point, I wasn't even going to church and didn't even know if God existed anymore. Mm. Then I was led from there to consecrate my life to Mary, beginning, you know, with a message that I heard in Medjugorje. When Mary says, abandon yourself totally to me, and I will lead you in God's perfect will. And this so appealed to me because I had no clue what God's perfect will was. And, you know, even though I grew up Catholic and didn't stop going to church until I went to LSU, you know, party school of the South, because it was no longer obligation. But even though I grew up Catholic, I still didn't learn a lot in CCD and all of that, you know, or when I went to the Catholic school earlier on, I learned some but there was so much I needed to learn. So not knowing a lot about the faith, like, so when I heard Mary say, abandon yourself totally to me, and I will lead you in God's perfect will, this so appealed to me. And I just, I had the grace, because, you know, I grew up with a grandmother that prayed the rosary, and we prayed the rosary when I was in elementary school and all, and I, and I really kind of, thank her, my grandma Ma Lottinger, for it. praying the rosary, because I know that she played a real part in my conversion. So when I abandoned myself to Mary, it was so appealing to me. I just, I had the grace right away to say, all right, mother, I give you my life. I give you my life. And sure enough, like the saints say, it's like life in the fast lane to God when we give our lives to Mary. That's why Jesus said, behold your mother. He wanted Mary to take us in her heart and draw us to union with him, like her union with him and with the Trinity. And so sure enough, that's what started happening. I am talking. Mary started leading me to this intimacy with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. She started helping me to be aware of the graces of my baptism. Mm. which I did not realize I received the indwelling presence of the Holy Trinity through baptism. When you had that experience, that it's, it's amazing, but when you had that experience, <clears throat> that profound experience, because you had gone to Hollywood in hopes of being a, a movie director yes, and all, yes. and that, that you were there for a few months, but you had this already this deep longing in your in your heart for something more right and that's why i went to hollywood i was <laughs> right right because you had that longing and searching, you were, yeah. and you were searching can you tell the story about what catapulted you to even begin to know who mary was didn't you write some kind of article or something well or somebody right, told you to write an article right before leaving for hollywood my dad asked me to write one last article for his newspaper because I, I was working as managing editor of the St. Charles Herald Guide family newspaper. And so he said, write this one last article before you go. And he, he didn't just ask me to do it because it was a local interest. Right. But it happened to be a couple who had just returned from Medjugorje. And so wow. in writing that article, you know, they were so on fire for God. And, and I interviewed them. And afterwards, they said, well, can we proof the article before it goes in the paper? And, you know, it's not really that professional to let them proof the article, but I wasn't that professional. So I said, okay. <laughs> and, and so sure, after I wrote it, I wrote the article kind of a back burner. Mary's reportedly appearing to six children halfway across the world, da da na. And, and so I let them proof it, and the woman reads it, and she says, you may be talented, but this isn't very good. 
And that was really kind of hard to, for me to hear because my identity was so caught up in what others thought of me right. at the time. And so she had the nerve to give me this little book and say, why don't you read this and rewrite it? But I think she was praying for me as well because sure enough, she must I been. start reading the book and it is so speaking to my heart. And, and so that's when Mary said, you know, open your heart to God in a sense. And I started living her messages as I was writing the article, and the article came out totally different. I made it a center spread, and my heart was just amazed. God didn't send Mary just for these six children halfway across the world, but for me too. Wow, that's and it was really speaking amazing. deeply to my heart. And so I started living Mary's messages before going to Hollywood because I was preparing to go to Hollywood and my whole heart was just changing. My life started changing then. What was coming to me was that during that time of you learning more about Mary and you were taking those messages to heart, what was coming to me is those messages, actually the ones that you were really taking to heart, are straight in line with the teachings of the church. Exactly. It doesn't even... Right. Uh, you know, because soon after that, I had got this book, True Devotion to Mary, with from Louis de Montfort. Okay. And I mean, I just... I read that too. That book so spoke to my heart. It's like it was so confirming what was happening to me. And mm. it was so confirming, yes, we're called to this deep intimacy with Mary. So basically, bond with Mary. I love it. You, you really fell in love with Mary. You fell in love yes. with Mary and explain uh, more about that. <laughs> well, you know, because I was so needing something in my life. You know, I had grown up, had a lot of friends growing up. I dated and everything and went to LSU, party school. And, you know, there was just something majorly missing. Mm. You know, I knew I needed something more in life. And um, when I started realizing it, it's like it was through Mary that I came to realize God again. You know, I know when I was very young, I had tastes of it, you know. But uh, she gradually led me to experience in an intimate way the Holy Spirit, Jesus, especially Jesus in the Eucharist, and our Heavenly Father. I had special experiences of each one of them. And you just, as you said that, you reminded me the church teaches that Mary is the daughter of the Father, the mother of the Son, and right. the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Right. And so when this was happening to me, and I was like, oh my gosh. And as I was praying the rosary, initially praying the rosary just because Mary said to do it, not feeling anything or experiencing anything. But as I persevered in praying the rosary, and often even three of them a day, wow. even when I was driving or different things, but and I'd go to adoration a lot. Mary totally led me to Jesus in the Eucharist. Yes. And as I would pray the rosary, I began to be revealed the mysteries. They, they began to come alive, and I, it's kind of like, it's like a transcending, you know? Mm. You don't see things on this natural realm, but it's like God starts revealing the right. truth. And so as all of this is happening, I am just saying, I have got to share this with others. <laughs> that was burning in your heart, huh? Yes. I said, we are sitting on a gold mine <laughs> as Catholics. Yeah. I said, Jesus is really present in the Eucharist. Mm. And the Holy Trinity wow. dwell within us through baptism. And Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant. She is the one mm. that helps us as we enter her heart. That's where we find. It's like her heart is the new garden wow. into which we're called. Adam and Eve were banned from the first garden. We're invited to the, into the new garden where, where we find the tree of life. And so, and so my heart was so burning because I so longed for something more and I didn't know how to find it. So now I'm, st I'm realizing the truth and I'm saying, I can't believe this. I was in awe over <laughs> awe over awe, constantly in more awe. 
It's beautiful. Well, As you were talking about yeah. the garden, it was just coming to me so strong, too, that the church teaches as well that um, Jesus is the new Adam and Mary is the new Eve. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's right. And, and so my heart was burning. My heart I was burning, it. and I wasn't able to fully share my heart every time I would try uh -huh. to enter communities. Wow. Stayed with one for 13 years, you know, but... And others, I, I tried to visit uh, cloistered communities or different communities because I was so drawn to the contemplative life as well. But none of them was I able to share this fire. That, that fire that was heart. burning in your yes. heart over Mary, right. too, through my Jesus. Prayer, through yeah. my prayer and my time in adoration, it would always just stir up this fire hmm. and this longing for more to know. And you certainly, wow. you know, primarily praying for others to know, right, right, which right. is our primary mission, ministry here is prayer for others to know, right. but also to have outlets of writing or, or and this. giving talks, <laughs> yeah, this type of thing, because so few people realize the graces available to us right, right. as Catholics, if only, if only we just open our hearts. And, and if only we really take receive the gift that Jesus gave us at the foot of the cross when he said, Behold your mother. You know, Sister, as you were saying that, what was coming to me is Pope John Paul II used to say many, many times, Open wide the doors of your heart. Open yes. wide the doors of your heart. What was the program that Pope John Paul II set out for wow. us? Well, for this at the new millennium. In the beginning, when he was writing to us, in Novo Millennio Innuente, he says, put out into the deep, mm. Duke and Altum. Mm. And he's, he was a man of deep And he was deep speaking prayer. of that scripture of, you know, they were fishing and they couldn't catch anything. And he said, put out into the deep on the right side. And, right. and sure enough, they catch all these fish. But really, he was just calling us to put out into the deep of our hearts because we are living right. such superficial lives here on earth. You see it's it more like, and more. It's so much. And, and, and so many Kind of like the not, Truman Show. It's like many of us are right, like in this Truman in this Show. And this deception of right. what's really happening. And so we're living on the finite level in the natural right. realm and trying to be sated in the natural realm, and our hearts are all longing for more. Right, right. They're longing, but never finding that sating, which is really union with Jesus, union with the Trinity. And, and in and through the heart of Mary, we can grow in that most deeply. So John Paul II said, put out into the deep, and then he said, contemplate the face of Christ. Mm contemplate the face of Christ. And he just went on with that, you know, like, so what does it mean to contemplate the face of Christ? Wow. To enter into his presence, encounter Christ. And so then he says in another one letter, Rosarium, in 2002, he said, contemplate the face of Christ with Mary. Mm. And he really encouraged That's... the rosary because he knows this is the secret. It's wow. the secret of Mary to really know how to contemplate the face of Christ okay. more deeply, to become more and more receptive, more fertile ground of the heart, mm. more disposed to Christ's presence. And then, and then he sent us another encyclical on the Eucharist, and he said, the program which I have set before the church at the dawn of the third millennium is to contemplate the face of Christ, to contemplate Christ with Mary, and to contemplate Christ above all in the living sacrament of his body and his blood, mm. the Holy Eucharist. Mm. So, wow. you know, and this was in 2004 when he shares this program, but mm. I was already having this burning in my heart since 1987, 88, when I had my conversion. Right. right. So I was already striving to live it. And, and then hearing about John Bosco's famous dream, you know, the two pillars, I and that, that totally confirming me in what was wow. stirring in my heart. And then, of course, John Paul II is 
totally like anchoring on. He's he's drawing the church to to the two pillars of devotion to the Eucharist and Mary, and that was only only confirming us all the more as missionaries of our mother of the Eucharist. Right. In our mission, we're in these times, there's such a need for it. Yeah, and I was going to ask you that too, that what was your vision as you, as you were desiring to start missionaries of our mother of the Eucharist? You know, what was your vision? What were, what were you envisioning it to be? Well, I think mother take over. <laughs> yeah. It was up. Uh, you see, because yeah. I would be spending a lot of time in adoration. And whenever I was in adoration, and I was letting our mother form my heart, and I would be mm. reading these messages, mm. the Mary movement messages, and I would be just going deeper in the heart of Mary, and she's always drawing us to union with Jesus in the Eucharist. Amen. And, and speaking of how key that is, and of course the church, it's only the church teaching. Right, right. The Eucharist is the source and summit of the whole Christian life. And her bringing us to this union with the Trinity, every time I would be in adoration and just growing in this awareness of the Eucharist Hmm. and of Mary, and I would start crying. I would say, Lord, people need to know this. Hmm. And I just couldn't, I didn't have outlets that I was able to really let it come out, Hmm. you know? because that, those weren't the primary charisms of the communities I was in. And so that's why I just, I just, I tried to, I tried to tweak it all the time. I tried to say, okay, well, let me just fit where I am, bloom where I'm planted. But you know, through the, my spiritual directors, retreat masters, even my superiors, I was mm-hmm. led. They, they were confirming me in it. My Reverend Mother even one time said, I'm concerned that you will be stifled here. She said, I see that you have a, the gift of devotion to the Eucharist and Mary, and I'm concerned you'll be stifled here and that the church will miss out. <laughs> and that's what yeah, I, I was feeling as well. That must have really made you just <clears throat> overjoyed, you know, it realizing... Did hey, there is something going on here in yeah. a deep, deep as way. Ha- as hard as it is to step out, yeah. step out of the boat and just right. know that you have nothing to hold on to, right. that you're just saying, okay, here I am. Lord's saying, come, and I'm saying, okay, here I am. There's all these mighty waves and big winds, but, and he's saying, just he's keep your beckoning, eyes yes. fixed on me. Yes. And our mother is saying, let me carry you. Let me She's like holding you by, you the, by hand. the hand yeah. throughout this. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would like you to um, share the beautiful truth card that you had oh. written years ago and what you and I try to pray together as, as often as we can. Yes. If you could share well, that. Well, I was on retreat, you know, when I was with the TORs. Um, I was on retreat and... During that time of retreat, I was meditating on these messages, different parts of messages, just going deeper and deeper in it before the Eucharist. And different messages were just speaking to me. By the end of the retreat, I wrote all of the little parts down. From Our Lady Speaks to Her Beloved Priest, yes. just in case anybody and doesn't I, know. And, and I was started, I wrote these little parts of the messages down. Mm-hmm. And I said, I need to be renewing myself in this truth. Wow. And That's so beautiful. I, so I called it my truth card. That's beautiful. And I started saying it every day. It's very powerful. It is very powerful because people, people just come love to it. tears. They love it. I mean, when we pray with people, they, they begin to cry <laughs> or they just have such a peace about them and they kind of remain in this silence after we pray this prayer with them. I, I was sharing this, I'll tell you this. I was at a conference a Leanne Payne conference, if anyone knows. I w- it was an ecumenical conference, and there was this, this pastor, a Protestant pastor, and he had seen me there. He asked if he could talk to me about Mary. <laughs> and so I said, well, that's the right question. So we went and we talked, and I, mean, and I shared everything about Mary that I knew, and I was just like sharing you know, the truth about Mary, 
true devotion to Mary, which many Protestants don't realize. Right, right. And he was getting it. And he was neat. getting it. And at the end of it, I shared the truth card. Wow. And I, so I'm, re, I'm sharing the truth card with him. And then he's a, a big, muscular, good-looking pastor. And uh, as I'm sharing it with him, he starts bawling. Wow. He is just crying wow. and crying. He has all of this stuff coming out of his oh, God nose love and everything. God but love he was him. it's because he was experiencing Mary. Mary. He had had mother wounds. His wow. mother was not very loving wow. toward him. And so he was getting it not only up here, but, but in his here. heart. Yeah. And Mary says in her messages, I love that. Her her presence is becoming ever greater. And she said, people don't need to study me. They need to know me. <laughs> Amen. So, so Amen. Later, I love it. I love it. Right. She and says, they don't need to study me. Well, I mean, not that that doesn't have its place. It does. <laughs> right, right, right. She right. says, there's been enough study of me. People need to know me. Amen. And Amen. so this pastor... I can vouch for that yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. So this pastor... Um, Later, I saw him at the conference again, and we had just a wonderful connection when he was crying and all that, and he shared about his mother and all. So later, I'm walking by somewhere, and he's leaning against the wall, and he stops me, and he, and he points to the picture across from him on the other wall, and it's of Mary holding baby Jesus, holding and with the rosary or something. Wow. And he says, I get it now. He says, I get it. He was just standing in front of this beautiful painting of Mary with Jesus. And he was probably placing himself there mm, as Jesus right, in, in right. Mary's arms. So, you know, that brings me to why one of the many reasons why Mary is so important. It's that bonding, that bond with the mother. Right, right, right. Coming to know the love of a perfect mother because... We all have mother wounds. And we long for that bonding, don't we? Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So, yeah, so here we go. You want to share the truth card with yes, them? Yes, yes. I'm going to share do it, it with to you them. All. So, <laughs> we do it together. So, <laughs> for anyone who's consecrated out there, this is what Mary calls us to do. And for any of those who aren't consecrated, realize this. You may feel called to give your life to Mary and to surrender everything to her. Let her be your mother. Mm -hmm. You may feel called to say, Jesus, I want to receive your mother. You tell me to behold my mother. So I want to receive this gift. Mm -hmm. So this is what Mary will do if we're consecrated to her. And we always have to renew this. It's not a one-time thing or once a year. Right. Right. It is daily. Daily. And so Mary... It's radical. It's radical. And that's Amen. what people are needing in our time. So this is what she says. Mary says, if we're consecrated to her, she says, accustom yourself to a new way of thinking. It is not your place to think of what is best for you. Let it be I who build moment by moment your future. Be ever in my heart and at each moment you will find peace. Do not be worried about what you are to do. One who has consecrated himself to me belongs totally to me. He cannot at any moment of the day decide freely what he is to do with himself. If you remain with me, I will tell you at every moment what I would like for you to do. And then whatever you do will always be according to my will, which is the perfect will of God. I myself will take you by the hand, and together we will do everything. With you, I am like a mother who is teaching its child to take its first steps. Live with perfect love and perfect abandonment the present, which I, moment by moment, arrange for you, my little babe. You are no longer alone. You always have with you the mother who takes you by the hand, who clasps you to her immaculate heart. You know, and wow. 
it's just so powerful. And so Very. toward the end of that message, when she sang, she prearranges everything. I mean, this just changes our whole outlook on life, everything. It's like no matter what is happening, no matter how difficult things are, are around us, even if we have cancer, even if we're about to die, even if the world is falling apart, the sky is falling, a tsunami is coming, a hurricane is coming at us. Right. No matter what it is, even if someone is, you know, about to murder us, mm. if it gets that bad, all mm. of this, Mary calls us to surrender, to be in her heart in the present moment, because in her heart is the kingdom peace. of God. Amen. Yes, in her heart is the kingdom of God. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm. And he says, behold, your mother. <laughs> Because he knows he's drawing us back. Mary is the mediatrix of all grace. And it, it makes so much sense because he says right. the kingdom of God is within. Okay? And Mary, of all people, had the kingdom of God within exactly, her heart. Exactly. For sure. And it's like Christ is the head, we're the body, but Mary is like the neck. She's the channel. The church says she's the channel, the mediatrix of all grace. grace. The distributrix mm. of grace. Just like Eve picked the fruit and gave it to Adam, wow. and then we yeah. all received it. Right, right. Mary picks the fruit of Christ's redeeming graces and, and hands it to us. She's the mediatrix of all grace. And so it is, it's between night and day when I live the truth card or not. It's like riding the wave of grace when I'm in Mary's heart, and I'm saying, Mother, take over. <laughs> Because she, she says... When rather I rather worry, than being tumbled underneath it, huh? Right, rather yeah. than being tumbled underneath. And she says, do not be worried. She says, how can you have any problems of your own if you're consecrated to me? So, so Sister Lilla Marie will often say that to <laughs> me. She'll say, do you have any problems of your own, Sister Mary Claire? And I, and I have to go, oh, because everybody, of course, has problems. We all, we have, all have problems. problems. But, but what do we do with it? What, what, are, what are we doing? Yeah. Are we taking it on ourselves? Right, that's the key. I can't take it on myself. It's too heavy. Or are we saying, Mother, here? <laughs> I'm like, I want to be like Lord a little here. child and just say, Mother, take over. Mother, I give this problem to you. It belongs to you. It doesn't belong to me. I can't handle it, Mother. Just like little children. They know they can't take on these big problems, but they know that Mom and Dad can. And yeah. so that's, that's what our Lord is wanting us to do. Right, and then, you know, Again, reminding us, it's it never stops at Mary. Right, absolutely because not. Kind of like what um, Saint Ignatius of Loyola had the trilogy that he spoke of in discerning God's will or in praying. He said, "Go to Mary, bring it to Mary, unite with Mary in it, then together with Mary, go to Jesus." Amen. Then and and together bring it to Jesus. Then. With Jesus Always. and Mary, go to the Father. Father, yeah. And so that's, you know, that's what allows us to fully, you know. Blossom. It, that, and that is so true. I'm glad you, you brought that up mm -hmm. because sometimes people will begin to think, especially if they're hearing this in the middle, oh, they're just giving too, right. emphasis, too much emphasis to Mary. But we cannot separate Jesus and Mary. The Their two hearts are them. one, right. Yeah. And, and it's to Jesus through Mary and Mary's just like the moon, reflecting the sun. She right. reflects the sun to us. And, and again, I'm going to close with this because Jesus had given me this, um, this analogy because so many, Catholic, even Catholics and Protestants were saying, but why do you need Mary? Isn't she just an obstacle to Jesus? Wow. And I, I had this awareness. I wish I could point this at the crucifix. But Jesus is dying on the cross, and um, think of it this way. Let's let's move this over just that way. So, uh, we'll move it over to yeah. the crucifix. There you go. Crucifix. And you see it? let's lift it up a little bit. There okay. we go. Okay, so Jesus is dying on the cross, you know. Okay. And he's looking down, and he's seeing this woman totally receptive to him with every fiber of her being, totally 
loving him in return with every fiber of her being. And it's because he's a jealous God that he is saying, behold your mother, because he's wanting us to give our all. He's wanting us to be totally receptive to his love and to love wholeheartedly in return. He's wanting us to live wholeheartedly the scriptures. Right, right, right. To be true disciples. Love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so he's looking at this woman, and it's as though he's saying, I want her to teach you <laughs> to know my love as she does and to love me in return as she does because he's a jealous God. Now, when you bring that up about jealous God, can you explain that a little bit? Because it's not the same jealousy that no. you and I experience because it's, our jealousy is, is on this human level. It's not the same. It's, it's like it's the first commandment. There shall be no other gods before me, God right. says. And, and we're called to let God be God. Right. And, and he's, your maker will be your husband. Yeah. You know, we're called ultimately, even above and before our spouses, right. you know, if we have, of course, us, Jesus is our spouse, but um, baptism comes before marriage even, you know, but we're called to love God and with everything. He's longing for his bride to truly be his bride. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Amen. Sister, thank you so much oh, for, thank you uh, for asking. Yeah, this was this has been wonderful, and thank you all for joining us. Thank you all. And if you have any questions or anything like that, just be free to comment. God bless you. God bless you.